Welcome everyone to Let's Talk News Now. I have with me today the man who's probably made more merriment in the studio than, well, okay, I'm not going to get into all that. But nonetheless, he is the owner, co-owner of the Queen, Queen Victoria Pub at the Riviera. Mark McGarry, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'll tell you what, buddy, you have been absolutely fantastic. You've been so gracious to myself and to Ella and to the staff and everyone here. We've had lunch at your, at your restaurant. We had our launch party there, which was a fantastic success. We had quite a few people there and so on. I noticed, I noticed you bugged out. I did, yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't keep up with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight, you are once again extending yourself to the community by hosting the fundraising event we're doing for the Miracle Flights for Kids organization. And we really, really, really appreciate it. You and your partner, Nick, absolutely awesome people, and we cannot thank you enough. You're welcome. I'll tell you. Going back to how you and I even bumped into each other is that actually Ella, being from London, spotted your fine eating establishment <laughs> and said, we need to go in here. And that was really kind of the beginning. And that was to be able to go to an actual British pub. So tell me a little bit. Why a British pub? Why in Las Vegas? Because yeah, there is, really isn't another authentic one in town. We are we're the most authentic in town. So... We, we knew we were missing it, and we wanted to create a place that we knew we were going to enjoy. Well, and the thing is, and you've stuck so much to detail, but you yourself, you come from a culinary background. Right, yeah, I was, I was a chef back in England, and uh, my partner Nick was a master butcher. So the, the bangers, the sausage, all the food is, is all our recipes. And, you know, and, and Nick really does take great pride in that. It is, it, there is a definite, significant, different taste between... Americans trying to do an interpretation of British food, let's say like bangers and bangers, right? And the actual way that you folks prepare it. And I wonder, is, is, is what's the, what's the largest contributing factor? Uh, just the fact that we, you know, we know how it's supposed to taste and what it's supposed to be like. It, it'd be like me cooking in a Mexican restaurant. You, know, <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't be happy about seeing me there, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so going back, to the, going back, though, to the actual food and the environment and everything that you folks have established there, when I walk in, or not so much when I walk in, I've never been to London. When Ella walks in, I think she's almost going to get a tear in her eye because it's just everything is authentic from the way that the bar is set up to the, the food preparation all the way down the line. How in the world did you guys pull that all together? Yeah, well, we just followed the simple concept. A, a pub is a public house. And it's where you're supposed to feel warm and welcomed, and, and that's the, the, what we try to create there. Well, obviously, you guys have done an absolutely fantastic job with it. Now, I remember you sharing a story with me not all that long ago, and that was why it is that the perception by Americans is that British food is rather bland tasting. And you were mentioning that this actually has historical value. Right. I think it's, I thought it was hugely intriguing. Well, well, the Americans think we've got bland food because there was about 650,000 troops stationed in England during the Second World War. And because we're in Ireland, you, we were cut off from the rest of, of Europe, so we had rations. So we would get a pound of beef, we would get very little salt or sugar, so food did taste bland. So 650,000 troops came back to America and said the food in England is terrible. <laughs> they, they were just there at the wrong time, you know. And, but prior to that, you would actually use as a as a cook that would under, or as a chef, excuse me, not cook. As a, sorry, chef. <laughs> <laughs> as a chef, you would say that you know that there were a lot of different types of spices prior to World War II that were actually associated with British cooking. Oh, absolutely. Well, we we were the gateway in Europe. I mean, everybody in Europe came through Britain, and spices, you know, herbs, all the flavors came through Britain. So, so we've got some of the most diverse cultures in the world. So, so we have great food. And, and so would they ultimately then end up capitalizing off from that by having all the different spices and so on? They'd be added to different, different types of Absolutely, food? Absolutely, yeah. So how, when you're, you know, when, when we're at the Queen Vic, all I know is I love the food. Other than that, it gets too complicated for me. Right. Okay. <laughs> but I do know this, that there is different types of flavors and tastes and so on. How would you say that your, your food as a whole, is, it, is your menu balanced that way? Some of it's going to have a little of that maybe pre-World War II type of spices and so on and so on and someone's going to have that kind of traditional taste to it that americans may perceive as being a little blah or not as spicy right well i think americans have the same sort of taste as we do in britain they like their meat and potatoes and we you know we like to keep it you know moderately flavored mm -hmm. but we also like our indian food 
We like Chinese food, all the different cultures that came to Britain. So, so we love to try all types of food. And, and that's represented on the menu with our South African bobo tea pie. Uh, we've got our English shepherd's pie. We've got our Indian curry. So it's, it's a very well-balanced menu. Now, the other part of it, you were talking about Nick being a master butcher. Right. And he actually makes the bangers. Is that the correct word? Right. It has a whole other connotation here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, but as far as bangers and so on, then he actually does, he has his own recipe on how he actually makes those sausages. Correct? Absolutely, yeah. Yep. Even down to the bacon, we, we, we cure our bacon with a Victorian uh, recipe, so it's all authentic. Well, I'll tell you what, Mark, I want you to pause right there because I've got a, actually, I've got a little surprise just for you. I've got a surprise for you about some of the people that are coming to the party tonight. So you take a quick break. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.